uh, this session is uh, focusing on supportive collaborative uh, for smart, smart learning, uh, especially. Um, and uh, we're going to have uh, four talks uh, related to using various kinds of technologies uh, like uh, computer vision uh, in the first talk, then uh, online judges for uh, programming contests, uh, then a recommender system for uh, educational activities. And uh, at the end, we're going to have a look in uh, how chatbot technologies can uh, be used for uh, smart uh, learning platforms. Uh, and uh, the first presentation uh, is called uh, Exploratory Analysis of a Large Data Set of Educational Videos, Preliminary Results Using People Tracking. Uh, and uh, the presenter is uh, Marius Eduardo Kojocha. Uh, uh, Eddie, you have uh, uh, the stage. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Good. So my name is Eduard Kojocha, and I will present you um, our paper, which is the result of uh, research that we have done in the past few months. Um, and it's mostly about how can we extract relevant information from uh, educational videos using machine learning and computer vision models. So uh, the motivation for our research is that um, understanding and analyzing the educational process is very important because we can extract relevant information like uh, identifying faulty techniques, uh, identifying flaws in the educational process, uh, extracting relevant statistics, or even uh, uh, in the future, maybe it would be possible to offer metrics that uh, to grade the educational process uh, via custom metrics. Um, most of the approaches until today were uh, mostly based on text analysis, such as courses or forums and uh, so on. And um, there, uh, has, there has been a very sparse usage of uh, analyzing educational videos. Um, these obstacles, uh, the main obstacles for uh, the sparsity of uh, video analysis um, is mainly due to the fact that there were no, uh, there were very little models and not very reliable for object detection and tracking. So it, it was pretty hard to uh, process images. Um, also, the computational power was uh, reduced compared to these days. And uh, in the last decade, we have seen significant improvements in these areas where uh, since 2012, uh, the convolutional neural networks have captured the field of processing, image processing. And we see each year ever greater and faster uh, models. Um, also, the hardware computing power has incre is increasing yearly and also is getting cheaper. So it is much easier to get your hand on a piece of hardware which can run such models. Also, um, the data sets are very relevant since in the last decade, uh, the data set, the label data sets for uh, computer vision problems like uh, classifying objects, uh, detecting objects, um, uh, image segmentation and so on, uh, have increased both in size and in quality. And also we have access to more uh, videos uh, which we can filter by tags. Um, for example, YouTube 8M from YouTube 8M, which is a huge data set of videos from uh, the YouTube platform. And um, this mixture of factors regarding software, hardware, and data sets uh, enabled us to uh, start the research in this area since it is not only plausible, but uh, it also could be very useful in the future. As related work uh, for educational visual anal analytics, uh, there have been tried uh, to uh, apply convolutional neural networks on um, images which were embedded with keywords extracted uh, using speech to text. And uh, this was used to, in order to classify 
um, the video videos from uh, massive open online courses uh, by topics. Uh, also, it could have uh, uh, identifying uh, different types of actions from videos has been achieved. And uh, also, um, conversion neural networks have been used in order to identify the factors that impact educational videos, uh, their rating, and so on. Regarding the computer vision part, uh, we have two distinct uh, problems which uh, uh, we used in uh, our research object detection, which uh, there are multiple approaches, but two of the most popular are the ones based on uh, regions, regional based convolutional neural networks with the RCNN family. Um, each of them represents a successive improvement of the last one, which uh, yields better results, a better performance, better speed. And uh, generally, these methods are uh, very high performance, uh, but they are slower due to the fact that they extract regions where objects might be. So there are lots of regions which are uh, input fed to, the, to a classifier, which will not contain relevant information. Also, another approach is the uh, YOLO, or you only look once family where uh, an image is traversed only once, is um, split into a grid of uh, rectangles, each one having its own classifier and regressor. Uh, this approach, the methods from these approaches are significantly faster than RCNN uh, models. Uh, they are slightly uh, less performant than the RCNN models, but the speed up makes up for the, the small difference in performance. Uh, I know in the last few months, YOLO 4 and even YOLO 5 have appeared, but uh, we kept uh, our presentation according to our paper. Um, so we used object detection in order to identify persons in uh, videos. Then we need to track them, which uh, requires identifying that at successive frames, the uh, two persons are the same person or not. And uh, there are multiple ways to achieve this. For example, we can uh, track by uh, minimizing the Euclidean distance between two objects in successive frames. But this method is uh, working properly only if a single object is tracked and is clearly visible. An improvement to this approach would be uh, to use a Kalman filter, which predicts the trajectory of the object and it makes it easier to uh, track it. And uh, an another improvement of this approach is to use, besides the Euclidean distance and the Kalman filter, um, a convolution neural network which um, identifies how similar two, object is, two objects are visually. So the proposed mo method that we used in our uh, research uh, is based on a data set extracted from YouTube ATM, which had uh, almost 8,000 uh, videos with the school tag attached to them. Uh, we used only uh, almost 3,000 videos which uh, met the, some quality requirements because there are lots of videos with very poor resolution or a very poor FPS, which were, uh, would uh, have uh, impeded our research. Uh, also from each of these video, we extracted a two minute long sub video from the middle of them in order to avoid intros and outros, which were not very relevant. M many of them were uh, walls of text or things like this. Um, another reason is that we want our videos to have a similar um, temporal dimensionality in order to be easily compared one with, with each other. And uh, we uh, assume that uh, in the middle of the video is the mo most relevant action in, in each video. Also, we extracted the two minutes of sub videos in order to keep the computational uh, cost to a reasonable level in order to <laughs> be able to finish the research <laughs> in time. Um, <clears throat> for uh, object detection, we used YOLO V3 uh, because it was very, uh, very fast and uh, the small difference in the performance didn't uh, uh, impede us very much. And also it was very uh, easy to implement and uh, we limited the classifier to detect 
as it, it is able to detect many other objects, but with limited to the person. And for deep sort, we, for uh, tracking, we use deep sort, the one with the convolutional neural network uh, for tracking. And if you can track objects, you can also count them. In a video where you track objects, the number of objects is, the, is equal to the highest ID of uh, an object. So uh, what have we done with uh, these results? Ba basically, we clustered them using uh, k-means and mean shift in order to see if we can um, find some relevant clusters based on the total number of persons in a video. We assumed that we can um, extract some information about the activity in a video based on how many people we detect that are uh, in the video. So the results looked like this. Here is a histogram of the uh, total number of people that we plotted. And um, we can see that there uh, might uh, seem some anomalies for uh, videos with more than 1,000 uh, uh, people detected. Uh, that's what, that was our initial in assumption. But later we, we uh, realized that these videos have um, outdoor activities with crowds and many people. Also, our, our um, uh, proposed method uh, tends to overestimate the number of people. So these are not, uh, these detections are not erroneous. There are just very many people in uh, those videos. Um, and there's a, uh, a general split between uh, indoor and outdoor activities. It is clear that most indoor activities will have more, uh, few, fewer than 500 people detected and outdoor activities will generally tend to have hundreds or thousands of people due to the fact that there is a lot more space outdoors. Um, then we made a histogram and clustered only the videos with less than 500 persons. Um, and here we, we found uh, three distinct um, types of activities. So basically we saw that uh, um, activities where we detect m uh, at most 100 people are usually uh, educational uh, um, courses taking place uh, or um, interviews or um, usually classroom activities. Uh, the videos from 100 to 200 uh, usually tend to be indoor sports activities or music bands playing or um, a school presentation, a school commercial where a camera, a camera guy goes from the, into school and uh, films the, um, the students and the teachers and so on. And the activities, more than 200, uh, were mostly sport activities and only sport activities with crowds. And uh, here we have some examples. For, uh, here we have a video where a single person is presenting school materials and what, are, where, what they can be used for. And um, this is a almost ideal situation where the piece per, a person is clearly visible and um, can be easily tracked. Um, here we have an example with classroom activities where the students are uh, grouped uh, and uh, doing, um, with, are playing educational games or studying. And also the video is interlaced with um, uh, teachers and parents talking about the uh, school program. Uh, here we have an example of indoor activity with a large number of participants. It's a music band playing in front of a crowd. Uh, and here is the, an example of uh, outdoor sport events with uh, which uh, th this kind of videos tended to be in the thousands of people detected. Um, and uh, actually there would have been many more other people because uh, if you can look in the background in the bottom pictures, there is, uh, the, is the, there's the crowd in the background, uh, but because the, of the small contrast, they cannot be, and the small size, they cannot be detected by the object detector. So actually there are more people than we detected in this kind of videos. Um, so as we told you, we usually tend to overestimate, uh, our mo uh, method tended to overestimate the number of persons. And um, many errors are due to the fact that the videos are very, very different one from each other in very different setups, lighting conditions. The cam uh, some cameras are fixed, some cameras are mobile. 
um, and the most, uh, the biggest factor is the presence of many cutscenes, which uh, induce uh, abrupt discontinuities in the video stream. Uh, also, uh, people which are visible only from the chest up are um, pretty hard to track because the tracking uh, method was trained on uh, pedestrians which were fully visible, the whole body, not only the, from the chest up. Also, the fact that many students wear the same uniform makes it hard to differentiate between them, even for human, if they're, if they're viewed from the back. And uh, also, there are uh, confusing uh, figurines with humans or posters or uh, printed, uh, human, printed persons on uh, paper. For example, here we have a science fair where people made a, a cardboard mock of uh, a city and there are some figurines and our <laughs> object detector identifies those figurines as humans. Also, in this picture, we see three, um, three girls study, having a studying session, and in the break, they talk about uh, the boys that they like, and they imagine some, um, some actors, and they just are overlaid on the video, and they are identified as, uh, as persons. So, as a conclusion, uh, we tend to uh, have those uh, uh, categories of videos that we, I told you about. Uh, videos with few detections usually represent single person videos with interviews or courses on, with only the teacher. Uh, videos with tens of uh, detections represent classroom activities where the students are visible as well. Uh, where there are more than, uh, where there are a few dozen detections, the activity is very wildly, so we still need to research in that area. And videos with hundreds of thousands of detections uh, usually have, uh, include sport events or school commercials. And we can improve our results by using a, a better object detection and tracking, using more data, of course. And we could uh, try to detect more relevant objects, such as blackboards, desks, books, or other educational related objects that could offer us more information regarding the video. Uh, thank you, and if you have any questions, I'm open. Okay, uh, thank you, Edward, for the, the presentation. Uh, does, uh, are there any questions or uh, suggestions regarding the study? Uh, if there are no questions from, uh, from the other participants, I, I can start and uh, if uh, some other people uh, have questions, uh, uh, we still have uh, two minutes for, for questions. So my first question is, uh, do you feel the need, like, uh, do you consider the uh, specific data sets uh, with uh, learning activities and uh, people labeled in these learning activities will improve uh, uh, de detecting uh, people and maybe how large these data sets should be like this would be like a transfer from a technologies to people in education or maybe there, there will appear some uh, data set specific for this task uh, well it, it depends what are the goals if we just want to have a general number of the people in a uh, video and our error is uh, consistent meaning we always overestimate and always by some percentage relevant on the density, then having better data for object detection will yield small increments in uh, improvement. But if you we will want to have uh, more, uh, we did more accurate detections regarding individual participants or the teacher or to separate the teacher from the students, then yes, labeled uh, by, uh, image, uh, videos labeled by person uh, would be very important in this research. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And I see a raised hand, um, Mihai. Uh, yes, sorry, it took me a while to, to raise my hand. So my curiosity is in terms of follow-up experiments. So you, it's really neat uh, that you clustered the images and you saw different patterns. But the question is for follow-up experiments, so okay, including uh, educational objects, but what do you envision on a larger scale and how do you plan to assess your results or evaluate them? Well, firstly, um, I think the, the first tangible objective would be to uh, improve these classifications into the type of, of video. If we have a, 
a course uh, with the students visible or not. If we have a school activity, I don't know, like playing games, music bands, or something like this. Um, mm -hmm. This, uh, in order to achieve this, uh, the the other objects, uh, edu relevant educational objects, will be very important because if we see a basketball hoop, we will most likely tend to think that th this is a sport event. But if we see a blackboard and a desk and something like this, we will uh, think that it is an indoor event. We will correlate it with a number of persons. Um, I think we can go even further than this, but I think this will be the next checkpoint in uh, in this research. We could actually identify um, if we, we would correlate the video stream, uh, the image with the sound, we could actually extract the quality of the educational process. But I think this is uh, still way ahead of us and uh, it is a long way to achieve sure. that goal. And are you considering direct predictions, for example, within the selected images, if you can group them uh, initially, but unfortunately that's quite tedious to be done. You could train a classifier using a pre-trained neural network. So using directly the outputs from there and making the prediction of the event. Have you also considered this? Um, I, my, our idea regarding this um, uh, topic was not to, um, have a classifier trained on uh, specific uh, uh, school uh, educational videos is to use wild educational videos because we, we will not be able to control the medium and use uh, reliable tools regarding object detection, tracking, image segmentation and so on and to extract information from that and because I think that would be a very big overfitting problem if you would use um, specifically labeled educational videos for this. Yeah, that's really neat. So to combine handcrafted features derived from methods that really work okay and to correlate them with uh, specific events, educational events. Really yeah, cool. I, I think a, a, an unsupervised approach after we do the <laughs> object detection would be better than a supervised approach. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, thank you, and uh, we are uh, just in time. Uh, thank you, Edward, for uh, your uh, presentation. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can uh, write Edward on the chat uh, or uh, give him an, an email. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are moving on to the second presentation.